we we look like Muppets or something. I was like, <laughs> hey everybody. Oh yeah, so that's the mm-hmm. camera there. Yeah. Um, okay, hi everybody. How's it going? Um, so so we're live from the Iowa Cult Museum, and I'm gonna do something exciting. I do want to tell you. Let me know how the sound is because there's a, a vent. You know, we're in the in this big cavernous space, mm-hmm. and so the sound will be different. But I can turn up. You know, I can turn it up a little bit, or you can turn your you know, computer up or whatever, but it's the first time being in a quilt museum. Oh my God. On like location the, in Winterset, on location. Iowa. I'm wearing a hat. The hair is not good. <laughs> the hair is not good. It's not just like me. I styled my hair today. So you look great. Because of this, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Otherwise you think it, I would do it. Yeah. Because... Well, I didn't have to prepare anything. Well, it's true. Yes, it's yeah. true. Sound is fine. Okay, good, good. good. I, we, we did a test uh, at the last yeah, minute. At the last minute. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, hopefully it's good. Okay, good. You can hear the back, the vent in the background. Yeah, it's, a, it's our HVAC, our special HVAC system that does not make the quilts blow around. Oh, that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. So the green screen is up, but I'm going to I'm going to drop the green screen, and I'm going to show you what's really where we are. But here's the thing too. So on about this is first? an announcement. No, 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 no. no, no. no. So no. here's an announcement. Um, yeah, we're cozy and warm. Hey, Miss Elaney and Stephanie and Dee Marie. Oh my God. So it's really good. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Um, so on, here's the thing, and I'll repeat it again, but one of the announcements is Friday, it's kind of a weird time, but I'm working with the museum's hours and my quilt con yeah. burden, uh, getting everything ready. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh, hey, oh, Faith Quilts just subscribed. Thank you so much for subscribing. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Thank your, you very your much. Your quilt commitments? My quilt commitments. Commitments. Friday at 9 a.m. Central. I know it's a weird time. If you catch it on the replay, you know, that's okay. Friday at 9 a.m., I am going to do a live stream from the museum where I go around with my mm-hmm. phone and show you the exhibit here. So I'm going to drop this green screen and you'll see where we are. I think it'll be really cool. The walkthrough. A walkthrough. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there's uh, interest, of course, I'm interested in um, broadcasting from QuiltCon to, on Twitch, you know, on the show. But I don't know how that's going to work. So I was like, oh, you know, I could take people on a tour of the exhibit here, which is amazing. And mom's mm-hmm. going to talk about it. But I could test that out, you know, using my phone and stuff. So on Friday at 9 a.m., the museum's not open till 10. It sounds good, right? Okay, I think it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good test and, and it'll show you the quilt museum, which is so beautiful. So, so Friday at 9 a.m., I'm gonna go live on Twitch and take you all through the museum. Uh, it won't take too long, it's not huge. Well, it could take a long time because the quilts are really good, but. 25 quilts. Yeah. I'll yeah. be at yoga class. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you want me to talk about these? Well, wait till well, you do this. this. Okay, okay, watch, watch this. this. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Look at this, it's so big! Now you can see our coats. <laughs> it's so cool, it's like the coolest thing. Shove our coats out of the way. Oh yeah, we got <laughs> The background. Yeah. So, can I talk about the museum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Iowa Cult Museum is just, it's a block away from our front door. And uh, it's in a building that was the J.C. Penney outlet store. I got my first bra here. Yeah. The children's department was on the mezzanine. 70 children's years. Children's preteen department. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the babies. I got your snowsuits up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but it was, uh, for 70 years, it was J.C. Penney's. And like all the buildings in Winterset, which are these 1890s Italian two-story storefronts, it's been many, many things. And after J.C. Penney closed, it was like a TV repair shop, mm-hmm. and then it was a photographer studio. Studio it was all kinds of things. But we have these super high ceilings because it was a gift shop at one time. Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I hit the. I got. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't move the thing. Yeah, because, the mic is. But I, you'll see everything on. on. Yeah. Yeah. On Friday. Okay, okay. So, so well, fortunately, some people bought the building after the TV repair shop and so forth, and did a full gut and rehab and took it back. You'll see the 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 tin the the punch ceilings are, I don't know how high is that? Forty feet? It's pretty high. Oh, it's 30, awesome. 30, twenty feet. Twenty feet. Anyway, um, and it's a beautiful hardwood floor. And um, you know, we have well, for example, the show that we're that we're that Mary's going to take you through. Uh, was curated by two people, Sandra Sider and Pam Weeks. And Pam Weeks is the curator of the New England Quilt Museum. And when she's visited, because she's a pal of mine, she actually lets me call her Pammy. 
but anyway, lucky. but anyway, uh, she comes in and she's like, "Oh my gosh, I wish I had a gallery like this because, like many museums, the New England Quilt Museum is in an, an old, beautiful historic home. So it means they're they're small rooms, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. we here we have five movable walls. It's a great museum. We rearrange the the, the gallery the, the new, every time. The New time. England Quilt Museum is amazing. Is amazing. Is amazing. Oh, it's fan. They have a collection. We yeah, don't yeah. collect here, yeah. but we rearrange, we reconfigure our floor, our hall, our gallery every exhibit and we're on like exhibit 25 or so and it's never been the same twice so we have this wide open space and um, so deeds not words I'm going to show the book yeah oh that's good yeah wait and I hold it up because uh, someone so a, a kind soul is making a book list and by the way I asked Eric to help me with the affiliate link thing and I sent him both the emails and then I was doing slides for QuiltCon and he was like, if you want me to help you with this, you need to stop doing that and let and work on this. And I was like, I can't. So <laughs> so that's not done yet. So this is okay. the this is the cat the book. It's and beautiful. So the, the so cover and everything. Yeah. The, it's it's Deeds Not Words celebrating one hundred years of women's suffrage. So the curators actually invited twenty five noteworthy quilt makers. I mean, I don't know all of them as well, but there's names that are, you know, Susie Shy, um, there's uh, Carol uh, uh, Fallert, oh, she has, mm. she's has a married name now, uh, 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 Jane Birch Cochran, mm -hmm. uh, Therese May, uh, many wonderful artists uh, created quilts mm -hmm. for this exhibit, and it's been touring for two years now, I believe, yeah. and we were gonna be the last stop but I think it's going to go to a museum in Washington State, oh, the tacked on, added on. Cool. But it will be here in Winterset, Iowa, um, until through April 10th. Oh, and that's great. a Sunday, yeah. and we, the show's just been up a short time. But we uh, we take a show down on Sunday afternoon, and then we are closed only one day, and then we hang the new show. And the new show, everybody should know. Wait, wait, wait! What's oh, the yeah. new show? Wait. I mean. <laughs> Sort of Many of you will be excited about this because it's called Midwest Modern. It's being curated by Heather Kenyon, the president yeah. of the Modern Quilt Guild. That's right. Oh my God. And uh, she is going to curate I forgot uh, that was Midwest next. Quilts. I th I th it was actually your concept that you floated I did. years ago. Yeah. And uh, that's going to open April 12th. So we are only close one day. Can you, can you just day. read that real quick? Okay. Uh, Midwest Modern, April 12th through June 26th. That's the day before my birthday. Read, read speak. I mean, Midwest read. Modern is a cool prairie vibe where undulating fields meet urban cool. Ooh. Modern quilts from around the Midwest are inspired by the architecture of their cities, from Frank Lloyd Wright through Mies van der Rohe to Je John Gang. <laughs> I don't know that architect. I don't either. They are shaped by the horizons where the sky meets the farmland, lakes both great and small, the blend between industry and agriculture, and rooted firmly in the needle traditions of American patchwork, both traditional quilting and the more austere lines of old, dark Amish quilts. Who wrote that? That's he amazing. I bet Heather did, Heather, yeah. oh my God. Curated by Heather Kenyon, who's a, been a, a longtime friend of great She's one of my best friends, yeah. So, you know, come to Winterset. It's always great to come to Winterset. We only have about four exhibits a year here, and they're up for three or four months, and then they come down and they, they go back to their homes. We have uh, various curators that we hire, mm -hmm. or guest curators we curate ourselves. So there's always something new, and we're not collecting quilts. So we have yep the sky's the limit it's really weird to know where to look because there's you and then there's the screen <laughs> and, there's, and then there's the microphone which <laughs> yeah. isn't usually up there and then there's the camera yeah. okay quick question so i'm you know as the host i'm kind of like constantly adjusting what i need to do mm -hmm. and and by the way hello to everybody i think going name by name except for sj pepper who's my <laughs> foil she's well my, i she, told mary i'm like mary if you do that you know you you, you know you, you stop the flow and this you know, is this my mom said this not not me yeah. she's like you know if you say hi to everybody it, it's good but then it stops the flow of the show and, and the, it the takes more people time. come if you had a thousand people what would you do i don't know and i have great fear about that because i'm like well what if people don't think that i appreciate them oh well you do oh yeah i mean yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't so, be here if it weren't for you. Uh, no. So, uh, so, but that is true. My mother was like, you need to figure out how you're going to do that. And so mm -hmm. it came from her and not from me. But anyway. Say hello to each other, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you? Anything you, you suggest to someone and then you say, why don't you? It's like, okay. Um, so, but here's a question about exhibits. So you said this exhibit was going to, you know, be done, but now it's going on. Like, what if somebody like Joyous Fibers or, you know, Raffle Waffle, it's like, uh, you know, how do they, can you, can you sort of uh, get a quilt exhibit to come to a, a place near you? Like, how do you, can you suggest that? Actually, some of the quilt nerds might actually know this. Uh, hey, on, hey, so on Positive Threads, I don't know if, if you've been, you've been around. Yeah, you've been around, but I want to say hi to you. If I see anybody new 
or anybody who's in the chat for the first time, I got to say hi because that's a big deal. But, I mean, what do people do if they want this show? You know, Quilts, oh. and, Quilts and Human Rights, that's an amazing exhibit, and it tours. Like, Well, I think any show that you hear about somewhere, if you Google it, you're going to find a website or some contact person. Mm -hmm. um, we, right. we, we looked into it. When, well, our exhibit committee, it's the most fun part of being a part of the museum because we try to plan. Are we going to have a one artist show? Then something that's more traditional, something that's more contemporary. We mm -hmm. like to balance these four shows a year that we have. And so we knew that the, the International Quilt Museum, which is also IQM over in Lincoln, right, right. you know, they had the Ken Burns quilts, which you, you know, interviewed Ken yeah, Burns. Yeah. And For that, 10 minutes. And like, that exhibit, let's just, let's just yeah. get that clear. Well, and that exhibit went other places, I guess, and the IQM Lincoln sort of oversaw it. So we, we thought, well, maybe we could have it here. Well, it's like, ten thousand dollars or something oh, really? so it's like well we can't do that mm. so so i mean some of these exhibits i mean many exhibits i think this one our only financial commitment is the shipping on to the next place oh interesting so i think okay. because they had they had uh, sponsors uh, oh, uh, yeah. uh, and, and it's e uh, equilter.com oh cool is, is the is the, hey, the sponsor schiffer publishing schiffer yeah. and quilt folk uh, are the publishers of the new um second edition of un unconventional and unexpected yeah yeah, yeah you got a really well and as far it. as if you if you want this book uh, you can call the Iowa Quilt Museum and, oh, yeah. and order it. That would help us because, you know, it's January in Iowa. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so it's 515-462-5988. What's that number again, Marianne? 515. <laughs> it's on your screen. No, <laughs> 462 Could it be? 59. It could be. Okay, hold it up for a minute. Okay, get it really close. Yeah. 515 462 -59. Eight, eight. <laughs> and leave a message. Our uh, director is Carissa Heckathorne, and she'll call you back. It's only $20, and it's a beautiful quality. It book. is really it's very beautiful. nice. Yeah. Very, okay. very nice. Okay, okay. great, great, great. Okay, great. enough of that. Okay, so, 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 that's the, so that's the thing. Friday at 9 a.m. Central Time, mm -hmm. I'm going to get the phone and fire up the Twitch and see what it's like to do a live stream with my phone. Crazy. What about the iPad? You could use my iPad. Yeah, I have an iPad. Oh, it's an old one, yeah. but but so I got to figure it out because on at Quilcon, you know, so many people who are in this community that's so cool, uh, that's growing and and just I don't know, great. But like on the Discord. Uh, by the way, if you're a subscriber at any level, you can join our Discord, and it's really great. It's um, how do you do that, Mary? Well. <laughs> I know, uh, but someone does. No, no, you'll get you'll get the link. You'll get the you'll get the stuff. And um, but it's cool. And it's not like I don't know. Uh, several people today in the past couple days were like, I found my people, and I was like, Yes, it's great. Quilt nerds, you know, it's a specific kind mm -hmm. of like weirdo. Um, anyway, so <laughs> in so, a good way. In a, oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, you can you can do that. And and if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch subscription every month. You get one and. Most of the quilters I know, there's probably only one they're going to want. No, that's not true. You might want to watch other quilters. But in terms of subscribing to a mm -hmm. show on Twitch, you know, Quilt Nerd is like oh. going to be a, a contender, It's, it's I think, the one so. that tracks these folks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so if you do that, you know, joining on the Discord is cool. But anyway, it was on the Discord. People were like, I wish I could go to QuiltCon. I can't, you know, for all different reasons. And so live broadcasting from the show will be really fun yeah. on, on Quilt Nerd. Mm -hmm. And so I gotta figure out how to do that. So on Friday at 9 a.m., mm -hmm. I'm gonna take you through this exhibit and see how it As works and then get feedback from people like, oh, what should I do, what should we do? Mm -hmm. so, so that's gonna happen. Okay, so that's an announcement. <clears throat> there's a giveaway at QuiltCon. I'm not gonna talk about it tonight because we gotta, there's a lot to do. And mom, you said you're gonna hang out till about eight o'clock. Yes. Mm -hmm. I got pasta carbonara waiting for me. That's a very good reason to leave. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So, so the QuiltCon meetup. Just hang out in the Discord. I'm not. I am. <laughs> it's true. I'm not looking at the chat. I got it. I will. I will be, make sure to pay attention to the chat. But I'll get through these um, announcements. So, so QuiltCon meetup. It's developing. There's a channel on it in our Discord server. If you don't know what Discord is, it's just like a clubhouse basically when the show's not on chat board you know pe people hang out it's the worst name ever discourse, discourse yeah this no i wish it was discourse it's discord it's the worst yeah that is terrible anyway so um <laughs> i better not so criticize that's, anything, so that's though. developing oh yeah don't don't criticize anything <laughs> that's a terrible name people's oh. people's feelings might get hurt yeah. <laughs> um okay so and then quiltcon is is everything right now so you know sub stuff um <clears throat> Uh, all the things that I need to do for the show with the affiliate link and all that 
it's going to have to be after QuiltCon. I mean, I just can't do anything but get mm -hmm. everything ready for that. So just, just stay with me. And then the last thing is, and this is fun, um, and then we'll go to the quilt. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I won't say who it is because it's not finalized yet. But, uh, but a, a designer reached out to me, um, a designer who, who I didn't mention any designers by name in the video. I didn't even show faces of people, even though I could have and still been protected under fair use in, in terms of how that was put together. But I didn't, and um, it was important me, to me not to do that. So I'm not going to name anybody now. But uh, a, a designer reached did that tell you? Yeah, I think I did. Did. <laughs> a designer reached out to me, somebody whose work was featured in the video. And she asked me if I wanted to come and be on her podcast to talk about the thing. That's great. And I, oh my God. And when I saw her email in my inbox, I was like, ooh, because, you know, <laughs> I've gotten a lot of really, you know, mean emails and stuff. And, and, I, and I expected to, that to happen. But I wanted to tell you that it, she, her email was super cool. And she was like, this is like thought provoking. I'd like to have you, you know, talk about That's this. Great. And it's what I've wanted. Like, I just want to come on panels and, or, or I want panels to happen even without me. Like, just yeah. like, let's talk about it. And I think so, that's wonderful. And then, and then, so, so I said, like, of course, thank you for your email. I would absolutely love to do that. Um, Eric was like, be careful. I'm like, I don't <laughs> think she's trolling me. I think it's, I think, I just, I'm so glad. So we're working that out. And, uh, and if you know anybody, if you hear of anybody who's like, well, she should put her money where her mouth is, I will, there is no group too small or too big that I'll come on to, to talk with, not to attack, not to be weird. I just want to talk about the issue mm -hmm. at the heart of all of this kind of like drama that mm -hmm. happened. So, yeah. so just, just spread the word, you know, but that's really yeah. cool. It's really cool of her. So yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Let's, so I got to bring the green screen back up cause we got to We got to do this. Okay. Yeah. You've had a glimpse, cool is this? a glimpse of the, <laughs> a glimpse of the Iowa Cult Museum. It's so beautiful. I hope you'll all come. I might be here. Sometimes I'm in the gift shop. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, okay, okay, let's see, let's see. We got we to gotta get small. Now you have to say, help, help, I'm small. Help, help, I'm small. I'm really small. You're, yeah, you got to come in here. Okay, so, um, yeah, SJ, make it happen, dude. Okay, so here's the quilt. So this is kind of a funny choice because... <laughs> because um, things are hilarious, people. Say. Oh, people are hilarious. I mean, you're all very. People funny. would love to practice free motion quilting on it, and then they could cut, cut it, it up, up and make it. In. SJ is my co-host. Yeah, she's oh, really oh, yeah. she's my like Ed oh, McMahon. Yeah, oh, no, you're not. I'm sorry, <laughs> I said that. But um, okay, so this, so this quilt I picked for the intro quilt because, um, oh no, you can see the green. Look at that. Oh no, so what, hold on, hold on. Because oh, you got to scooch the. Yeah, window. I got to scooch the thing. Scooch it. Hang on now. No. Oh, I know what's happening. Hang on, hang on, hang on. God, it's amateur hour. <laughs> here, here, watch this. Oh yeah. Ooh. Mm. Okay. So, so this is funny because um, because this quilt is called Mother-in-Law, and Eric is here. You know, I'm his mother. I, I don't, I. I don't refer to him as my son-in-law. He's my no. he's my daughter's husband. Yes, he's just Eric. He's Eric. Yeah. So this is this is at the um, Art Institute of Chicago, and let's do part this. of their collection. Yeah, part of their collection. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to give you this to read. There's not much about it at the Art Institute, but can you just read? Yeah. You know mm -hmm. when it was made. Just yep. anything okay. that they have there. Uh, circa 1930. Of course, everybody knows circa means approximately. It's a guess. We, unless it's dated, we don't know. Designed and executed by Lulu Bennett. So we know who made it. Mm -hmm. American, 1885 to 1979. She lived a long time. How, how? 1885, oh, yeah. almost, almost, almost 90 years. Yeah, yeah. United States, Missouri, St. Louis. Currently off view. Aren't all their quilts currently off view? At the pretty artist's much. Studio? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Textile department, artist Lulu Bennett. Mother-in-law quilt, origin Missouri. Made between 1920 and 1940. Applique and, embro Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and embroidered quilt. Dyed and printed cotton. Silk, round, and acetate, plain, twill, and satin weave fabrics, cotton embroidery threads. So here's the inscription, that little corner Oh, yeah, spot. okay, let me go over there. Hang on, hang yeah. on, hang on. So there's this little inscription over here. So you can't point. Your finger doesn't come in when you no, point there. No, no, you don't, you don't get that. But I can circle with my cursor. Yeah, it, it, yeah I can read it. It okay. says, the home that tenderly greets the hyphen, or dash, mother-in-law. So, so, so read it again. I mean, it's cryptic. It is cryptic. So read it again. Inscription, the home that tenderly greets 
the mother-in-law. So like that greets the dash M dash mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, there was a Twilight Zone moment that I missed. What did I miss? The mother-in-law. I'm I'm a mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. I, I knew there's another reason why. Oh, yeah, there's another time I'm going to play that later A tonight. gift of Shelly Ziegert. Oh, yeah, Shelly Ziegert. Okay, so, nice. so then how big is it? Uh, 83 and a half by 71. So it's, you know, quilt-sized. There was no... That's so weird. There was no live show listed on Twitch. Really, right down? Oh, I... Hmm. I will, I will look into that. Oh, Look at uh, those so fairy points on the border as the border. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's really cute. A cute finish. And those those trees are like, I don't know, giant. They just have three big leaves. They look like lettuce, you know. <laughs> they look, look like tobacco little, leaves. Look at the little of. dog. So yeah. sweet. So, so when I saw this, I didn't really notice what mom noticed. Yeah, she looks like a little scarecrow. That's the mother-in-law coming She's to visit, coming right? She's coming to visit. Yeah, they're going to greet her, although the, nobody's waving her in at the door. You know, she's yeah. sort of, she's coming, and you know. She, the, she looks a little bit like, she's not, she's looking down. She's been given a black hat and black purse. I don't know. Well, I don't maybe know. Maybe that was fa fashionable. Well, but, of course. But, but you but. know, um, faces are hard. Let's just face it. Faces well, yeah. are hard. I mean, like, faces are hard. Oh, yeah. Like, like this look at this. So faces are hard. And, you know, that was, Liz and I, we used to always say that's why Sunbonnet Sue has a big bonnet because it covers <laughs> her face. And, and then overall, Bill, he's facing away, you know, so you don't have to deal with Who, his face. Overall, Bill? Well, that's Sunbonnet Sue's lover. Look, her, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Her lover? Well, we used to joke about that. Because, you know, there's Sunbonnet Sue, and then overall Bill is the, um, her counterpart. You have to scoot into the camera. Yeah. Overall Bill's her lover. Her male counterpart. I mean, I just, the word But he's lover, always facing away. The word lover and Sunbonnet Sue. Yeah. I didn't really put them together. Well, but. Uh, maybe he's just her thought partner. <laughs> What? Her thought partner? Yeah. Did they uncouple later? <laughs> like, what is thought partner? Well, Leslie Levy at one time. Leslie might be watching. She's yeah. out there. Well, um, we were at dinner at, I think, at QuiltCon in Austin long ago. And, and I went out to dinner, and I was brainstorming with, with them. And <laughs> and, and, I, and she, she liked an idea, and I'm like, I'm not even on the advisory board. She says, but we can be thought partners. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, that's ridiculous, and I love it. It's I love awesome. It. I, no, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Um, it's like a mentor and a mentee is a is a relationship where one is, but a thought yeah. partner or like they're you know it's an equal. <laughs> Ivana, Ivana said, all these years I assumed it was her brother. <laughs> Well, that man, he better not be because then it's really bad. Whoa, where'd they grow up? Oh, God. Um, and crafts for others is keeping it classy. <laughs> she says, they, I thought that. I assumed they were husband and wife. I didn't know any of this. They Bring just... back the jokes. Well, you know what? I'm sorry, just really quick. I, I'm disturbed now. I had to buy sunglasses. I'm not spending time on this, but I needed to tell you. I had to buy sunglasses because... I forgot mine, and we were we passed by a truck stop on the way here, and I was like, "What are the most truck stop glasses I could possibly get?" And so I got these. <laughs> and then and I then, and then you got your eyes dilated. Yeah, yeah. I lost a day of work because I got an eye appointment, and they dilated my eyes, and then I had to wear these out. And I I, I was like a dog with like a flea collar on. I was like, like they work they work in this town. They do. They actually really It's do. a great town. Yeah. yeah, it's great. It's amazing. It's a beautiful town. Okay, okay. let's move on. we got to move on. Yeah. So that's mother-in-law. That's our opening quote. Okay, so the show tonight, while mom is on, I've got a couple other things for you. But uh, on this uh, episode, I thought we would look at a, at a book from mom's bookshelf that I don't have, that I must have. Yeah, you can show that. Just a minute. <laughs> Just this is a clown show is what it is. All right. Well, we were talking about how faces are hard. And so everybody remembers. By the way, I showed them the block, but they haven't seen it. Okay, so so Mary posted this. Here, on, you get the spotlight. Yeah, she posted this, and I so I quickly grabbed it and printed it, and then I made a pattern of it. You, can, you can't see it very well. You know what? Let me just. You only get this on quilt nerd people. I mean, let's be honest. There's the pattern. <laughs> it's the pattern itself. I mean, that little tail. It's really cute. Mom. And how one ear goes up and one down. Yeah. And, then, and so here's the pattern pieces. Wait, 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 wait. It's, so great. You, it's you, great. I want to find the tail because it's yeah. so cute. Yeah, here's his little tail. It's really cute. It's his little tail. No. Wait, and, wait, wait. Show in the camera. Cause, oh, yeah. Because you got to really show. There's the tail. Okay. And then this little left ear. Yeah. Yeah. With arrows showing, you know, 
how to put it on. Dean Marie says great pattern, Marianne. Agreed. Yeah, and totally so, agree. And then really you've seen this already. They've yeah, seen but they haven't already. seen it like yes. this. But I mean, this fabric is he's hot. He's in the grass. Wait, wait go back, go back. I, I, oh yeah, he okay. is in the grass. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and I have more of that fabric. I mean, it's just in his face, his little oh, face. He's so sweet. Yeah. Oh my God. And I. Oh no, show the back now. My oh, yeah. my applique doesn't look like that. I just <laughs> attack the fabric. Well, I, I trimmed away from it. I'm not doing very. Yeah, no, you're doing great. I, I should trim from behind the ears. Looks like he's wearing a shower cap. <laughs> so, so I don't know. So, what so we're wait now. Do with say this. what you you said though, I because I already told him you were gonna make you were gonna write the full pattern. I I can. Yeah, I can do that. And then um, I don't know how you get it to people, but hey, Earth Girl, it's good to see. You. Um, but will just remind me, just nudge me. You cool. know, I'm I'm a, I react to things like Mom, do this, and yeah. I'll do this. You know. Look, Ivana, Ivana is my. She's my um, consultant. Like you're, you're very good. She's she's smart and she's like sell it. It's probably a good idea to fund the show. <laughs> I don't know. Faces probably. are hard, but she Kool Aid Man. Oh, wait, wait, hold no, no. Honest. So wait, where'd you read that? Where this were right, you? Honestly, Marianne Fonts could be specific and say faces and quilts are hard, but she keeps saying faces are hard. My own face is like, what have I been telling you? <laughs> Sj, this is her sound effect. Every time. Oh, 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 and look, I added two new ones last week. So, so we really needed this, and people were like, we need a dun 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 sound oh, effect. Oh, yeah. So, That's great. but we also needed a boo. And someone mm -hmm. said you should get the lady from Princess Bride. Oh, you know, boo. So, <laughs> Did it's you? pretty mean. I it mean, it's good, but it's it's intense. Yeah. I don't think we'll use that as much, but when we so, use it. So the pattern, the little puppy, oh, it's got a name because our, our, yeah. our dog Scrabble, um, I call her Puppykins. Yeah. And so I think that's the title of the, of the block is <clears throat> Puppykins, the yeah. pattern. Yeah, it's good. So I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I mean, I draw it up and... Listen, listen, you're the one who suggested we make a quilt nerd quilt and there's a whole mm -hmm. channel on the Discord and I'm like, okay. I don't know what to do about that. Well, I mean, I was thinking, you know, if people wanted to make blocks, I'd be willing to join them I mean, you know, they've got to be the, the right size and everything. That's great idea. And I'd find a sashing yeah. and everything. And then, you know, we could start, you know, it would be neat to, you know, like how we can help puppies, you know, like. Yeah, like, like, a, yeah. like at a humane society or something. If they great. raffle it at a humane society. And, and I did think there was going to be like a logo quilt, though. Like a quilt nerd, like mm. banner. For, for all the oh no not for that yeah, no yeah. I meant quilt oh. quilt like the the pictorial quilt oh well I oh my god pictorial quilts yeah so okay yeah yeah you see you see she suggested in Budapest <laughs> and now she's not taking any responsibility for well, it well I moved I like the puppy better you know it's all about what you want yeah. well true okay. I'm I'm retired <laughs> okay let's move on okay um, so, so okay. I guess yeah. we should think about that yeah you know we do need to think about and it, but write the pattern first let's yeah. start with start mm -hmm. you know with yeah let's not goals. let's not plan it right here Ooh, Ivana that's good we need to have a, a meeting <laughs> zoom business meeting oh my god M. Sue John says now I'm wondering if the puppy has a lover <laughs> a lover you people you're hilarious what if the puppies reproduce? Padma. Oh, God, it's so good. They're, Mom, these people, they're yeah, so great. They're like, great. they're so funny. And they're just awesome. I'm not, so, I'm not yeah. just saying that because you can hear me. You're awesome. It's so, it's so fun. Okay. So we'll, um, de we'll develop the pattern. I'm not selling patterns, but we'll develop the pattern we'll and you can out. sell it or whatever you yeah, want to do. Yeah. It's like, I'm just going to help you as okay. your thought partner. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. Um, Okay, yeah, no okay. sound effect uh, was appropriate at that moment. For hey, small town roots, moms are the best. They're the best. And you know, we've been through a lot. I know. Uh, who hasn't? Lot. But yes. Who hasn't? Yeah, but, but I mean, yeah. I think we're stronger than ever. Yeah. Okay, so because you know, with all the stuff that's been going on, there was a moment where I was like, I got to talk to my mom. And mm -hmm. I felt really grateful mm -hmm. I could because I know not we, everybody can. We talked a long time, too. We did. But, yeah. Okay, so let's get small. Okay. And now we're going to do one thing before you take off. I picked a book that I don't have that my mom has on her shelf. I've never even seen this book. Mommy, check this out. I, I scanned everything, so we're, we're gonna have it. Oh yeah, okay. Do you all know this book? I mean, this book is one, um, yes, whoever made the Patchwork Girl block is amazing. Um, so, so. Well, I just noticed something about it. What? Inside, I've got my name in it, and I wrote gift from Visions of the World Contest, 1988. Interesting. So in 1988, I entered the Visions of the World Contest with my quilt called World Peace. Mm. 
and uh, it was a companion quilt to the Statue of Liberty quilt that mm -hmm. you know that I made that mm -hmm. was the mm -hmm. Iowa winner mm -hmm. in a contest in 1986. Mm -hmm. And so Visions of the World was the first contest. It was in Salzburg, Austria. It was the first quilt contest, 1988, that anyone in the world can enter. Oh, wow. And I did enter it. But this, but let me just be, make sure that people know that this book isn't connected to that uh, no. contest, but it was, but you bought it there? No, they, I, I didn't go. I, I was not in 1980, I was not positioned to go to Salzburg, Austria. But I think it was just a book that they, hands on around quilts of many nations. Um, yeah, yeah, read, read that. I mean, I think it's important. Okay, at least, then, at least then it'll little... remind myself. And I think they, because I was a winner in that, I got best overall workmanship. Mm -hmm. So I was the best quilter in the world for about five minutes. <laughs> I never entered another contest because it's like, I never could I compete after that because competition just, you know, just soared, you know. Yeah, and you had to yeah. be just, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, it got so that people that entered contests, I mean, that's what they did. Yeah. And that was not what I did. Yeah. So, but, yeah. um, so, Hands All Around, Quilts from Many Nations is a celebration of the remarkable craftsmanship and design skills of needlework artists from the many countries that have enjoyed a long quilting tradition. Yeah, or, you're good, you're okay, good. Okay, or, or that have recently developed one. It is the first major visual documentation of worldwide quilting as it is practiced by the most skilled of today's quilt artists. Australia, Canada, England, France, Ireland, Japan, Switzerland, West Germany. These are only eight of the 24 countries represented by the 92 splendid quilts reproduced in this strikingly handsome book. Pause, because Jay Dancer just picked up the book, this very book, in a thrift store and was going to ask if I was familiar with it. Yeah. All of the quilt makers represented in this book, who are in turn symbolic of innumerable quilt artists the world over, have responded in individual idiosyncratic ways to the need to create. They have turned to fabrics, needle, and thread as naturally as artists in the past turned to brush, paints, and canvas. There, you need another one of those things because you're doing an art, quilt and art. In, I need in, what? Well, th this is talking about- I'm listening, I just- but Well, I'm... they've turned to fabrics, needle, and thread as naturally as artists in the past mm -hmm. turned to brush, paint, and canvas. Mm -hmm. Aren't you doing a lecture in Quilt Con on a fine art and quilts? I am, I am. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh. Okay. Um, their we work know. is a we distinct link to the stitchers of old, the traditions of their people, and to the sense of beauty accepted in their culture. With hands all around, we celebrate their remarkable talents, their skills, and their success that is an inspiration for all. So I think what was what has happened, and the, the people that put this together, Robert Bishop, Bishop, Carrie Bresenhan, Bonnie Lehman. And Bonnie Lehman, someone asked, yes, court quilts? Oh, uh, yes. Bonnie or, or someone was like, Bonnie Lehman, Bonnie Lehman, yes. I got to sit next to her at an event. Cool. Anyway, uh, I think what they did is they put this book together kind of invitationally to have a product to sell at that a convention oh. at, at that meetup in Salzburg, and so they sent one to me afterwards as a gift. You know what? You know what I bet? I, I just have to say, I bet Bonnie Lehman was in charge of what was contained in this book because this book, mm -hmm. this book, is amazing. Yeah. So I mean, it's really good. I mean, mm -hmm. I, and you know, you're lucky I'm here because mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I mean, the books that I don't have or the books that I that are, I'm curious about, which means I probably don't have them. You know, like you got great books. You gotta pull these books off the shelf and look at these books that you have sometimes for mm -hmm. inspiration or mm -hmm. just for whatever because, oh my God, they're so good. Well, hey Holmes, how's it going? And can I say something about oh, books? Yes, please. So Mark and I moved from our traditional home a year ago in October and, and it took six months because of the pandemic and we went through everything. And I went through all my shelves of quilt books and the only ones that, that you looked at on my shelf today, Mary, they're mainly picture books and catalogs like this mm. because any book I had that was a how-to, I donated it here to the uh, Iowa Quilt yeah, Museum. So we have a wonderful library of, of many mm. out-of-print books, you mm. know, by pattern designer Judy Martin, all mm. those books, because these are the kind I like to keep, is, yeah. you know, because I'm not going to make someone else's pattern. Right, 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 exactly. So, mm -hmm. so I went through and uh, Biblio Curious, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny VNC, Kenny is like, a book mm -hmm, worm mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. Everybody here is mm -hmm. pretty much. But um, so SJ, I don't know. I'm not so sure about about SJ Pepper. But but she, we're working on it. We're working <laughs> on it. Um, so okay. So I grabbed some of the most wonderful quilts uh, from this book to show you. And and there's really wonderful. Who was asking about this? Uh, maybe Sohani. I just remember she was like, "Is there any more about this?" It was on another show. Is there more about the this commentary? quilt that I'm showing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I. I love it when there is. There wasn't that time, but there's really there's a yeah. really good amount for yeah. this show. Just you know, like a good you a know paragraph. a good a paragraph. It's like a and good I'm paragraph. I'm looking to see if they are artist statements. 
I, I think they kind of under, are, which I love. Yeah, it, it, it contains artist statements. Good, good. Yeah. So, so there's just enough to, to look at. And so I, I picked some of my favorite ones. There are great quilts in here. And I just feel like it's got Bonnie Lehman's fingerprints oh, yeah. all over it. I love, Mary, when you said, uh, when you were looking at the early Quilters newsletter and saying she was a great editor yeah. because she was a great editor. Yeah. She was a, you know, she had, I think she was a librarian oh. or a teacher. Sorry, Sorry, they're all in chronological order. So oh, okay. just so you know, so, okay. so yeah, I didn't put tabs. See, yeah. oh, I didn't have them. But. So do you want me to read about this quilt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, I'll, and I'll, I get to do the Zoom part. Okay. Wow, it's, it's really nice to have Red, someone. Red Center by Ruth C. Walter, Hamilton, Victoria, Australia, made in 1982. It's 87 and an eighth. Oh, it was wow. Bonnie. Like measure it really carefully. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, eighty-seven and an eighth by sixty-five and an eighth. Hmm. So I would I would say sixty-five and an eighth by eighty-seven because mm -hmm. I go width by depth length. Poly cotton fabrics, heavy batting, hand appliqued, hand quilted, depicting the sand dunes, desert, and rock formations of the center of Australia. This quilt was made as a gift for the quilter's sixteen-year-old son oh, wow. after a family trip to Central Australia. Oh man. We camped at Ayers Rock, very famous place and explored much of the countryside, reports the quilter, who cited the trip as the source for her design for this piece. So it's the heat out there. She specifically- Oh, it's the heat out in the- Well, I'm, I'm saying it is, because you know, Central Australia, you mm. know, it's dangerous to travel there. Mm. She specifically selected the very a very heavy batting to give the desired three-dimensional effect emphasized by the free-form quilting. You can see And the, the vibrant color. red and brown recreate the contour lines, the red dirt typical of an iron-producing region and geographic shapes of the area. The quilt maker learned to quilt during a two-year stay in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, mm. 1975 to 77. Now, one thing, I, I might have missed it because I was like getting this ready, but the most important thing is to read where this person's from. Did you mm -hmm. say Australia at the yes. top? Okay, cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, from Victoria, Australia. Small Town Roots is like, what, no office supplies? You didn't have tabs? And you know what? <laughs> it's true. I didn't have them with me. And I was like, Mom, do you have tabs? And she was like, will these do? And I was like, <laughs> yes. And then I ran out of time. So, but th how cool from Australia, mm -hmm. isn't mm -hmm. that interesting? Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a, a really badass quilt for yeah. a guy, yeah. like, a, like a teen 16 year kid. old boy. Okay, so what do we have next? This is the back, this is on the back cover. Okay, but it's in also Yeah, here. it's in here, yeah. You don't have to flip too far. Yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll find it. It's not a long book, People it's not too many. People can look at it while I'm looking for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, this is on the very back cover and I just think it's fantastic. It's so good. Pretty neat to get chosen for the back cover, you know. Yeah. You know, the editors chose it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, give me that. Yeah. No, no, we've, we've gone too far. Oh. We've gone too far. Sorry, I, but I gotta. Oh, here, 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 here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We need each other. So, yeah. But this true. is a very short commentary. Yeah. It's called Communication by Winifred Burry, yeah, this Toronto, is like, Ontario, Canada. This is when yeah. we really love a quilt because mm. you know, it's quilt church. church yeah. um, this one is 68 wide by 88 long, cotton and poly cotton fabrics, hand appliqued, reverse appliqued, machine pieced, hand quilted, based on a print. Communication by Jackson Beardy. So this was inspired by another artwork. This quilt was made as a high school graduation gift for the quilt maker's youngest son, John, who is very interested in the world of communication, both as a ham radio operator and as a trained writer. Uh, Eric has been studying ham radio, so. I thought the same thing. Yeah. Uh, this is beautiful. I mean, I, I just, and it's Ontario, Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of like, Toronto. First, First Nation, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm people there and see some you know iconography there and you know what I love about quilts like this I mean it's just simple it, there, workmanship is, I mean those those points are oh really yeah Pe done. peaky and spike right is that uh, no. no 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 that's not peaky and spike oh. but like look at the the flying geese like they're always really effective <laughs> you know and like there's just it's patchwork it's pretty simple patchwork until you get to the middle you know the medallion which is like enlarge insane. it again like yeah, you just yeah. did I want, I want down to where down here uh, yeah there's a thread on it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you can't see it in the book. But I can't you can get see any closer. That's but close it's enough. right there, yeah. She's yeah. only human. This is wonderful. I just, I don't know. It's just, you just don't have to do anything insanely crazy. Mm -hmm. It's about contrast. I mean, this has really great contrast. Well, and also the warm colors and the cool colors. She's combined, you know, the blues and the greens and also with the yellow and orange. So yep. it gives your, your eye yeah, mm -hmm. plenty to look at. Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh, yeah, this is weird. I mean, I, yeah. I got to say. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Maybe they're going to trash me on the internet if they hear me say this. This is this one. I'm, I'm a little disturbed by this quilt. I mean, it's. It, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's holes. You know, there's yeah. like that phobia about holes. I don't like a really sea know. urchin or something or. A, it's amazing. It is amazing. But it, I don't know. Well, it, and this is another Canadian. 
Yes. And it's big. It's 100 by 104. Whoa. Uh, and it's the, the... Is it a stack of hats? Well, Maybe. Or baskets. But oh, yeah. we'll, we'll find out here. Yeah. But um, it's interesting because the title in the book uh, is all in lowercase. You know, like an E.E. E. Cummings mm-hmm, book. Mm-hmm. It's the third eye storm center. And the I is the letter I. The letter the title, I. The title is The Third Eye Storm Center by Robin Morey. She's from this town of Harrow in Ontario, Canada. Hmm. Made in 1985. Cotton, <laughs> poly cotton, satin fabrics, polyester fleece batting, strip pieced. Okay, now we're getting. Everyone the, thinks, as Jill says, it kind of looks like an eyeball coming out. It kind of <laughs> does, but man. So, I mean, I think it's textured. I mean, I think it's, uh, okay. you know, uh, tucking. So, here, here's now open okay, yeah, quotes. Yeah, yeah. Open quotes, okay? Okay. Over. Against a varied background of midnight, midnight blues, an imposing circular shape appears to float, excuse me, appears to leap from the flat surface as a whirling vortex, yeah, let me... culminating in what appears to be a huge single eye. Okay, yes, Da-na-na. yes, 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 good job. You're right, you're right, it's an eye. As it races toward the upper right, Ooh. states the quilt maker in her vivid description of this piece, dramatic as the optical effect of this quilt is, it is equally as impressive in its unusual construction. Mm. The quilt maker first created a circular piece through the use of padding strip piecing, hmm. then cut the circle into sections and hmm. rotated them into new orientations to create depth and movement. Interesting. Between the strips of color, carefully arranged by hue, are tiny strips of contrast fabric as narrow as piping. Hmm. The quilt maker draws on the philosophy of Carl Jung to describe her quilt. Hmm. The circle is, a, now we're quoting, uh, okay. Quote. Um, uh, Jung or Jung or her. The circle is a symbol of wholeness. Hmm. Excuse me. The circle as a symbol of wholeness is the Ouroboros from which we break out as children on our paths to adulthood. Ideally, we circumambulate, circumna- circumambulate, Cir- circumambulate. Ambulate around our personal center until, with maturity, we again experience the all-encompassing wholeness of the circle over again, this time conscientiously. It is my hope to be able to express this circular journey with fabric, creating mood and tension by pushing color, texture, and technique to their unknown limits. Hmm. Close quote. Yep. A trained sculptor, the quilt maker taught herself to quilt. She oh, usually worked with welded steel in her sculpture, hmm. but would occasionally work with fabric for a change of pace. That's a big change of pace. Yeah. But it was frowned on by my painter husband at the time. Now I work with fabric exclusively. Oh, her husband frowned on at, it. Her husband at it's, the time. It was her husband oh, at the time. He's gone. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think uh, it makes perfect sense she was a sculptor. Okay, let's yeah. move on. It's okay. very interesting. That book. was a long one. It was a long one. I don't think any of the other ones are quite no. that long. Not that we have problems. You know what? I'm going to skip this one because actually I want to talk about Judy Matheson. This oh, isn't Judy Matheson. This is but, another Canadian. But it reminds... Mm. Oh, yeah. Let's I've give got her credit. Okay. Uh, Curving cur- Cubes by Marilyn Stuthers, Winnipeg, uh, in Manitoba. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Boy, bye. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little slang. Like the boy <laughs> yeah. by. Um, yeah, so so this reminded me of a Judy Matheson quilt, mm-hmm. and I want to know more about her. And mm-hmm. so we're going to skip this. But but I, one of the things I don't want to keep you too long because I know. Oh, you no, have, I'm, you I'm know, enjoying things. it. I'm I'm good. Okay, okay. I can do a couple more. Um, okay, so so there's this. But what, when you leave, maybe everybody will be like, oh. No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, okay. We're going to get through these. But um, I, I just stay with quest- Mary, and I'll have, come back again. I have, <laughs> I have questions about like the geometric you know, stuff that everybody seemed to be doing in the, mm-hmm. in the, in the eighties. Okay. This is great. This is great. This is great. Okay. This is from Chile. Yeah. From Chile. Yeah, this is, this is called six and 10 pointed stars by Beatriz Castro of Santiago, Chile from made in 1983. It's uh, 98 wide by 78 high. Want me to read a bit of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in Ca- fact, just just read the quote from okay. the, oh, yeah. re- the quote yeah. from the maker rather than okay, the. Because she says, just cause, "My design was inspired by a braided belt huh. of the Cabuza style of Andean culture found on archaeological sites in northern Chile." Hmm. She explains she first found a drawing of the, this belt, the Cabuza belt, hmm. in an anthropological publication edited by the University of Tarapaca in Arica, Chile. I'm not saying things mm-hmm. right, probably. Um, she says the colors I used are different but I tried to maintain the contrast between the different threads of the braid so that the different designs the six and ten pointed stars can be seen machine pieced machine quilted interesting because I saw these diamonds and I was like did she 
you know, hand piece them, but it's all machine piece, machine quilted. This is really interesting. The quilt yeah. maker first saw a patchwork quilt in 1977 in the home of an American friend who was mm. living in Santiago. Mm. She taught herself to quilt from books and magazines and later made two separate trips to the United States to study special techniques. That's commitment. That's so cool. And, yeah. and by the way, where this went after this book is I... I was Googling each one of these people. I mean, it's just Google, so yeah. it only goes so far. But I Googled each one of these people to see, like, did they make more quilts? Mm -hmm. And she didn't, Beatrice, uh, yeah. didn't have anything else on, online. But um, but I was looking at, you know, to see if she did anything yeah. else that, like, made yeah. it into a book. Like, but where, I love where are they now? You yeah, know, yeah, exactly, like you exactly. And I found one, and that's where we're going to go next time. But, um, okay, I'm, yeah, okay. okay. All right, so this one. Wait, wait, wait. If you're going to leave, I want to. I won't leave. I'll stay for a while. Oh, God. Okay, this one is called. Well, it's 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 from Germany, so yeah, I can't East, but East Berlin. That's why I wanted. The, it's this East yeah. Berlin in Rauch, 1988. Five. Yeah, yeah. Rauchless Vond by Eldred Metzkes, East Berlin. That's Rebecca's crazy. Rebecca's going. Your sister's going to Berlin yeah. tomorrow. I went to the Stasi prison in East Berlin with oh. with Klaus. I've mentioned him before. It was yeah. snowing and it was terrible. And we looked at the Stasi prison and it was like oh. I was like, this isn't going to work. 1985. And this is uh, 70. Five wide by 94 high silk fabrics. Paste. Oh wow, silk! Wow. Um, let's see if she speaks here. Um, Before the wall fell, Kenny. I think, exactly. I, sh I, think I should read this because this is interesting. Read it. Uh, demonstrating a mastery of space and dimension, this quilt maker who works in the Deutsche Demokratische Republic. Wow. Um, huh. German Democratic has elevated the basic tumbling blocks design to an abstract optical illusion. Each face of the basic block has been pieced in one of three variations, bars, a checkerboard, or framed diamond with its center divided into two triangles. Through the manipulation mm. of these three surfaces, she produces the wow. stunning illusion of a mysterious city of private rooms. Wow. Some of the rooms, like some people's lives, are entirely open to public view. Mm. Others carefully closed off for privacy. Still other rooms reveal only tantalizing glimpses of space, just as most lives present mm. two faces. This mm -hmm. is deep, mm -hmm. the public and the private. Initially trained as a Gobelin weaver, a what? A gobelin weaver. What is a gobelin? It's a type of ta tapestry. Mom, gobelin. you... <laughs> you get the nerd, nerd <laughs> award. Okay, uh, gobelin. Tapestries, yeah. Uh, the, the quilt maker received her first impression of quilting in 1978 when she saw a small old patchwork quilt that had not been cut up in a German country, uh, country museum. This technique showed me the way of, to ornamental, ornamental clarity hmm. without using the weaving loom. Wow. From this then is on, for me, the loom was only for pictorial carpets, says the artist. I mean, I, I thought goblins were tapestries, but they must be carpets. I must be wrong a little bit. I knew it was weaving. Okay, okay. All of her quilts are made of hand-dyed, natural raw silk, wow. both by choice and by necessity. I don't want to copy old patchwork, so I turn myself for wow. the possibilities that live in the textures and muted glow of dyed silk. That's amazing. She sounds Damn. wonderful. Wow, East Berlin in '86 yeah. or something. That's that's awesome. That's I think Myra, Myra said this, this is next level. I, I, totally. Yeah. I'm so glad. I, I, yeah. I picked all these quotes for a reason. So you just have to. You just gotta. Yeah. You gotta stick it in. Okay. So 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 this is from Greece. Yeah. I mean, this book is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Bonnie Lehman. Bonnie Lehman. She showed us the okay. world. Okay, she you showed us the world. You read to the people. I gotta pee. I never get to do this during <laughs> the show, but I, I can't. I mean, I really gotta go. Sorry, I, that's TMI. This is it is. So uh, this one is called Patience. The school is called Patience, and I can understand why because it's got a lot of embroidery by Mona Novotny Koyos Koyomtsis. Koyomtsis. Athens, Greece, 1984. Who knew the quilters were quilting around the world already? Cotton fabric, polyester batting, embroidered, and I mean, polyester batting was kind of what you got those days. Embroidered, hand quilted. So now we're, uh, Mona is, this is what Mona says. The quality and beauty we get from life depend on the patience and love we put into living, states this quilt maker. When I started the patience quilt in early 1980, I was a very impatient person so that the quilt was my way of learning patience. So the quilt was my way of learning patience. The rules I worked with were very simple. First, I set no time limit on finishing the quilt. Second, I never worked on it unless I could relax and care about what I was doing. This is mindfulness back in 1984. Mindfulness, that's what she's talking about. In the summer of 1984, after hundreds of hours of work, I finished the quilt. I think of it as sort of a diploma which shows I graduated 
a much more patient person. Oh my gosh, you would love this, Mary. I read it. It's you read it? Yeah. The embroidery designs for this quilt were adapted from a series of 18th and 19th century cross stitch designs from, this is another Greek name, Ar They're really Ar hard. Ar Gar Gar Argy mm -hmm. Greece. Well, hold on. Argy Rokastrom. Greece, which have been on display at the Benaki Museum in Athens. The designs include flowers, trees, and animals embroidered in seven colors. Now she says, quilts are rarely made in Greece now, but there is a tradition of quilting mm. as a craft and art form, wow. she explains. Two types of Greek quilts exist. One consists of two layers of solid color fabric over batting, quilted in straight lines. The second type contains two fabric panels sewn together with a large hole in one panel. The hole is used like a pocket into which a heavy blanket or flocati rug can be placed. Huh. Because Kitty Hannah's like, why is the top different than the bottom? And, it, and it's such a good question. I mean, it's really different. I mean, well, well there are those it, pieces. She, but she made it as a quilt. Oh. To, maybe it's a, for the pillow tuck. Or the you pocket know. or something. Well, no, this the, no, she's, the pocket she's There's talking about else. does okay. something oh, else. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's interesting because, yeah, okay, Stephanie says it, it's meant to go on a bed. The bottom would be visible at the foot. Yeah. yeah great, yeah. great, mm -hmm. great theory. I, I think that she makes made a lot use. of sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's like if anybody has Greek heritage, I mean, maybe AQSG has a paper on Greek quilts. But if, you know, and I keep telling them, I'm like, you know, write something, you know, you mm -hmm. can do this. And, mm -hmm. and uh, why do they make fewer quilts in Greece? I mean, it could be, I mean, the climate, I don't know how cold it gets in Greece, but like, I don't know, some of the traditions, like they have different kinds of textiles there, you know, like there's weaving and there's mm -hmm. like different kinds of things that people do in different parts of the world. And I don't know. I mean, there's I, I do everywhere. not know what I'm saying. I'm just yeah. wondering like, you know, what kind of, yeah, what kind of embroidery. There's like Greek clothes yeah. and stuff with lots mm -hmm. of embroidery on them. But anyway. I, what I was, what, when she describes yeah. this, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking back to, it's a long time ago now, not this long, but Mark Lipinski, you know, slow stitching, slow stitching movement, mindfulness. This is her whole thing with yeah. this, just stitch slowly. Patience, isn't and it called patience? So she yeah. could learn patience. Yeah. Um, Echo So is going to Greece. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, look, look, at, look at it. Okay, okay. So this, so tonight, because mm. obviously we're, we've got so much to talk about, and so I'm gonna save read this and I'll tell you what's going to happen with this yeah. quilt and this person. And then maybe I'll take off. Well, the oh, no, maybe not. Don't leave. Okay. You, you start, you, there's okay. a vibe going. <laughs> I mean, I can handle the show myself. But. Of course you can. But you'll be lonely when I leave. Yes. Yeah. So this What do you have to do? This is Oh, pasta carbonara. Well, yeah. yeah um, it's hard. Mark will, he'll, he'll be happy. He'll, he'll snap. Just read and then we'll get, okay. okay. Hope. This is called Hope. Where's, by, yes. By Gita. Kandawal of Bombay, Maharashtra, India. Mm -hmm. Cotton fabrics, I mean, that's the cradle of cotton. Yeah, exactly. I, I, think, I mean, I think, I mean, cotton, well, cotton yeah. India, cotton. I mean, yeah. A piece quilted, 30 different shades have been used to produce this variation of the traditional log cabin pattern in which the blocks have been arranged to form a star. The design was intended, intended to convey youthful exuberance. Historically, certain types of quilts have been produced in the villages of India particularly in Gujarat and Rajasthan. And the quilt maker has collected samples of original antique Indian quilts. So However, cool. she herself turned to quilting as the outcome of a bored, suffocated, and restricted housewife trying to save. Mm -hmm. They're just all very honest in these things. I know. That's, I that's saved book is food, so good. clothing, bits of wire, even threads, until I ended up with bags full of leftover material, wires, plugs, etc. One day, these sacks full of beautiful fabrics blossomed into patchwork designs. Mm. Today she designs and produces quilts as an export business, which which her husband encouraged her to try. Better than the other husband. Yeah, I know. After seeing the work of a professional quilter from the United States on display at the American Center in Bombay. From a love of handwork instilled in her by her mother, who insisted she fill her free time with chain stitching and embroidery to perfection, she has built a business that today involves 40 other Indian women learning and working with her. Yay! Yeah. Clap, clap, clap. Yeah. Oh, exactly, exactly. And I was like, I know that name, like, Gita. I know that name, indeed. Mom, she was on the board of the quilt museum. And then, and oh. then, yeah. And so then, I was like, oh yeah. Oh, we know her. Yeah, we oh. totally do. And oh. one of my favorite quilts ever, ever mm -hmm. in the world is this. And she made that. Yes. Wow. So, so, and so, it I did so a much like Therese Mays. Look, at, look around. I know, there. I know, totally. Yeah, it's yeah. just amazing. So, so this quilt. So I did a little like mini chapter on Gita, but you know what, you guys? I'm gonna say Gita. We're gonna talk about this quilt and her and more. I know, I know, Molly is dead, she died. She is, you, you were unalived. This quilt unalived you. Um, but tonight, you know, there's 
we don't want to stay too long. And I mean, you know, mm -hmm. QuiltCon's going to kill me. It kills me every year. But then every year I didn't even have a live broadcast three times a week. You know what I'm saying? The quilt so, reminds me of Therese May's quilt. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're not going to talk about Gita tonight, but I just wanted mm. to tell you that that quilt, I was like, hang on. And how cool. So look at this one and then check out this one from years mm. before. It's just yeah, awesome. Well, this is from, this yeah. is from, uh, I know the face. I know the face. Yeah. It doesn't have a year on it. It doesn't have a year. But, but, it, but it, these are all mid eighties, you know? Yeah, exactly. And look at that quilt. It's just also, color, it's so neat it's color signed and it. log cabin. It's yeah, got a big so signature. Good. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. We've got, we've got, we've got about. I don't know how many more, but, okay. but and you don't have to read all okay. the stuff. Oh, oh, it, now, it, I, 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 I've heard of this person, I think, Third Eye by Evelyn Montague, Cork, Ireland. I think mm. she was, I mean, I think mm. she did more. I mean, these people were probably invited by, you know, Carrie, Robert Bishop, he, he's long deceased. He was the director mm -hmm. of the uh, Folk Art Museum yeah. and Bonnie Lehman. So they, you, I mean, Bonnie Lehman and Quilters and Newsletter had the column always what's new and news in quilting around the world. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, her editors, her people would have mm -hmm. sought these people that had reached out. I mean, it was, it's, it, as an editor, you know exactly how you find these, you source this stuff. And just think about Gita, like that was early on, like to be like, we want to feature your quilt in this book. Yeah. Like that was a huge win, yeah. you know, it's so cool. It um, would have been the Somebody mentioned that this quilt looks like the bling. You know, Cat Jones is quilt oh, bling. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cut yeah. gem yes, or, yeah. or MJ Kinman too, yeah. Yeah, this is hard. Yeah. This is hard. Oh my God. Um, 66 by 66 cotton fabrics, machine piece, hand quilted, a mm -hmm. dodecahedron or 12 sided quilt. Mm -hmm. This original design was inspired by the Passiflora passion flower growing on the quilt maker's garden. Oh. However, the wall hanging ended a far cry from what I originally intended, according to the designer. The flower is based on two sets of five petals which defeated her mathematical ability until a painter friend suggested she stop concentrating on the object and look at its surroundings. From then on, I was possessed, she said. Hmm. The sections of the quilt were designed as she went along. Just like Cat Jones with bling, uh, just like it. Yeah, each section had to harmonize with her previous efforts. This is so hard. She ended the design when it was possible to reintroduce the yellow of the center because she wanted an open effect. Hmm. A French woman who married an Irish poet and moved from Paris to Ireland 13 years ago, the quilt maker holds dual nationality. Wow. Uh, when I married and moved to Ireland, what had been a professional, active, and social life became an idle, solitary, and contemplative life. Hmm. My affections are wow. equally divided between my two countries. That shows up in my quilt because I realized as I progressed that the more I had originally planned, that more than I had originally planned went into this design. It had been in my head since my Paris years a personal mandala. Wow. It also says Mandala. 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 Not mandala? Yeah, no, I know someone who mandala, okay. knows. Yeah. It also satisfied my urge to bridge the contradictions of my exile. I live wow. in Ireland surrounded by intense natural beauty, but scant man made efforts, yet I come from France where the concept of you are what you create runs deep. Ugh. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So good. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is Japanese because okay. it's like tiny and perfect. I mean, like with the patchwork, it's just crazy. Oh yeah. This, and I mean, you know, when, when the Japanese quilters, when, when kind of American style patchwork mm -hmm. took off, Ooh, oh, sorry, sorry. there were these patchwork schools and the, often the, the teachers were men and the students were women mm -hmm. in Japan. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember going to Houston and the competition, I mean, they would like sweep the categories. And you could mm -hmm. tell the Japanese quilts right away, the, the meticulous workmanship. Mm. They had American influence in the patchwork, but they would be just worked and worked and worked. And you just, your, your jaw would drop yeah. at, the, at, the, at the intricacy of them. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, Flaming Drum yep. by Sanai Hattori, Yokohama City, Japan, 1985. Cotton and silk, hand applique, hand piece. If I made a quilt called, called Flaming Drum, <laughs> like... <laughs> It would be so bad. Like, it would be the worst quilt I ever made. Yeah. Okay, I'm just saying. Oh, that's like a chrysanthemum in the middle. Yeah, of the yeah, yeah. A stunning visual concept. This quilt draws its strength from both the exciting design elements and the fascinating interplay of Japanese symbolism. The wow. flames leap out into the night sky, filled with spinning stars, just as the rising sun, symbolized by the central chrysanthemum, splinters the dark with rays of light. White, for light and purity, represents the coming dawn. The drum itself is an ancient symbol of war, hmm. and in Oriental mythology, the use of red symbolizes the god of war. A variation of the traditional hmm. tumbling blocks pattern forms the sky full of stars. Mm -hmm. Vermilion red, a bright orange red, captures the leaping flames 
and at the same time recalls the royal use of this color in early Japan. Mm -hmm. Gold thread has been used to outline and quilt certain sections of the quilt. The quilt maker, author of The Quilt Japan, mm. is a professionally trained artist in traditional Japanese, is, excuse me, is professionally trained in art and traditional mm. Japanese embroidery. Interesting. Although patchwork is an ancient technique in Japan, quilting other than sashiko was seldom seen until after World War II, hmm. when the American presence in post-war Japan introduced many elements of Western culture. Wow. I mean, oof. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. a tour de force. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Time. We're gonna keep going. We're not gonna do this because okay. all here, all I wanted to show you on this <laughs> is that this is from Japan. What's yeah, it oh called? Yeah. United States Japan Friendship Quilt by Japanese and American artists. It, it, is it not like Aiko Okano? I mean, it, I mean, it's it's like that sort of. It's food. There's food. There's these wonder. I, I swear, <laughs> it doesn't say who worked on it. I don't know. I mean, to me, we did a, a segment on Aiko Okano the other day. I mean, mm. come on. This like Probably was really sweet ice cream. Look at the way the ice cream is dripping. Mm. Oh, like I eggs. just, I feel like she may have worked on this quilt. Maybe I'm wrong. We the don't ramen. know, but yeah, the ramen and everything. This the sushi, mm. and it's got and it's got that polka dot thing going on, which she uses a lot of, and mm. blue and white and checkerboard. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. If well, if she, if she didn't work on it, I would you, be surprised. Could you find her uh, gallery on her website? Look at him. Look at that little scamp. Hold on. Oh yeah, he's a mouse. Guy. Oh, it's a mouse. It looks like a mouse to me. Hold on, hold on. Come here. No, come here. Come here. <laughs> he had to meet the puppy. They look like yo-yos. The ears do. Yeah, yeah. I think they are. Yeah. Okay. 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 That was that was just that was it. Okay. So we're gonna. I'm I'm this. getting tired. Uh, okay. No, we're not looking at kimonos. <laughs> I, look, I now I'm there here. No, wait. That's Japan. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Go to this one. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I gotta go with the flow. If the if my, the mother unit's tired, we gotta. You know. Here we go. Scotland. Uh, no, Scotland. Scotland. No. Okay. No, this is better. The, what's this one? This one. This one is uh, South Africa. South Africa. Let's okay. let's talk about some interesting okay. places. Floral landscape by Nina Lawrence. Scotland is very interesting. Please do. Oh, not I love play. Scotland. Yes. We're watching. We're watching. Uh, oh, the. Hmm? Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, Shetland. Shetland. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing about South Africa. So, I talked to Marsha McDowell the mm -hmm. other day. And, oh, that's a fun thing I'll tell everybody later about the quilt index. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you now. Marsha McDowell and Beth Donaldson, mm -hmm. who run that, the quilt mm -hmm. index, they're gonna, we, I'm gonna do like a training session on the show one night where we, I show how people to how to it. use yeah, the quilt index. I've never index. known how to use it. I, I me mean, neither. Yeah. And so I'm gonna get trained on cool. a Zoom call and then I can train everybody else like in real time how to use the quilt index. That's great, that's a great idea. So you wanna hey, know Mother about Nature. this Mother Nature, yes, yes. It's by Nina Lawrence of West, Westville is, this, is the town. Natal would be the state, I guess, South Africa. Uh, 1983, 20 by 30. So this is small. Oh, 20 by 30. Yeah. Wow. Or 30 by 20, I would call it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was taught you did artwork, you know, the, the width first. Interesting. Um, Applicade, a pictorial wall hanging in somber tones that, formally, that form the hilly foreground and the mm -hmm. overcast sky. This work is relieved by the gaiety of bright applique flowers, some of which escape the confines of the piece's inner borders. The vivid colors of a spectacular sunset in warm golds and oranges, however, are the true focal point of this design in hmm. which the selection of prints was an important consideration that adds a complex tonality yes. contributing to the overall effect. And that's a really long sentence. <laughs> the quilt maker who puts as many as 45 hours into even her small works, Nina Lawrence, is a frequent exhibitor at the Grassroots Gallery in Westville. She never sells her work, however, since family members claim it all. Mm -hmm. I never have an excess, she notes. That's great. <laughs> South Africa. So M Marcia McDowell's working on a book about quilts in South Africa, and I'm sure that she talked to this person. Yeah, but amazing. but but she she said by the way, and you're going to do mm -hmm. two more. Okay. And then you're going to go have pasta. Okay. Okay. Um, she said that Cape Town. She has been to Cape Town, South Africa, like 30 times. She's wow. taken groups there. She's like Cape Town. She, they, she said they almost thought about moving there. She and her wow. husband. Yeah. yeah. She's like, you got to go there. It's the best city yeah. ever. I was like, okay, cool. Wow. Okay, so two more. So let me choose them. Okay. Let me choose what they will be. Okay, I want you to read about this one. Okay, I gotta find it. Okay. I can tell she's getting tired. Okay. That's true. Okay. Uh, from Tahiti. It's so beautiful. Tahitian Roses, Marie Carr, owner, Tahiti. Hmm. She's the owner. Interesting. Oh, yes, because she didn't make it. Yeah. This is a vintage quilt. Quilt maker oh, unknown. God, it's so great. Very Matisse. It's. Yes, it is. It was in a Tahiti. Did Matisse go? Yeah. Uh, go no, go oh. again. No, no, no. Yeah. 
Yeah, Gauguin. Yeah, Gauguin. That jerk. <laughs> yeah. He died of syphilis, yeah. didn't he? Uh, hand applique. This he large... was a jerk to his wife and kids, and he was mm. just a jerk. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> this large square piece. Josh, should I go on? Yes, please. <laughs> this large square piece is a beautiful example of a Tahitian quilt. A, a tifefe. I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. It's it's bright red combined. It's bright red combined with light and dark green are the colors of the lush island foliage, and the roses are constructed using a variation of the wine cut paper applique technique. In this method, paper is folded into quarters, then cut into in an intricate design. When the paper is unfolded, the design of the quilt is revealed for the first time. Quilts made by this method wow. are usually finished with ripple quilting or echo quilting. Wow. I think that's true here. Um, in which the Oof. stitches follow the outline of the design elements. This bold floor design is typical of Tahitian work. Quilt is most probably introduced into the Polynesian, Polynesian Islands by American missionaries. Wow. Yeah, that was a fun time. In the <laughs> mid-19th century. Before the islanders had access to woven cloth, garments were made of fiber produced by a felting process using the treated inner bark of the native mulberry tree. Wow. Wow. I mean, it's like, it's like I don't know, like there's um, Hawaiian quilts, you know, have this sort of like cut paper, yeah. symmetrical thing, but I, I gotta say this is like, uh, oh my and, God, and it, it looks, the red. It, it does look like cut paper in that center yeah. turquoise, but then it, but then I like it better red. in a way I do, because it kind of, it's too. freer. There's, and there's two colors, <coughs> which usually Hawaiian quilts, it's like, two, it, I mean, there's, there's three, three colors. colors yeah. No, yeah, yeah, three, mm -hmm. instead of just two. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know, this and quilt, reverse I am, applique. I'm dead, I'm yeah. unalived. Yes. Okay, so let's do one more, Mom, and you're doing very good. Okay. Very well, and I'm going to have you do... This is by Chris Edmonds. I didn't scan that one. I don't like she's, it. Yeah. Um, no, just kidding. She was, kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. She was a, a major... How about this? Nancy this is Hopper. Crazy. This is Nancy Hopper. Yeah, I love Nancy uh, Hopper, but I talk about her all the time. Yeah. Okay, do this one, this, this insanity. Did I go past it? I don't think so. It's toward the end. Wow. Mm, I know. A little bit more, a little bit more. The, 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 there, there you go, there you go. Uh, Sunburst by Christy Crystal, Tumat, Munich, West Germany, 63 by 63, made 1980. 1980. Cotton fabrics, machine, see, you were a little, you were born in 79, so you're like a baby. I'm right? almost 1980. Yeah. I try to push it to yeah. say I was born in 1980. Yeah. Why? Almost. Because I'm getting old. <laughs> and it matters. No, it doesn't matter. August. Uh, machine pieced and hand quilted a brilliant explosion of yellows and golds with a hot core of reds mm. shading to darker colors is contained by the black edges of this quilt. Oh, it's black edges? Really? Oh, it looks brown. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I think that's a typo. It's so dark chocolate brown mm -hmm. in that picture. Mm -hmm. Well, photography well, has come a long way since 1985. Hmm, interesting. Uh, a contemporary piece, this work gives the maker a chance to mm. showcase her quilt making skills as well as her avant-garde design sensibility. It's amazing. I hear the voice of Bonnie Lehman. The quilt maker first became acquainted with American quilts when she visited an Amish family mm. in Ohio during her trip to the United States. This wonderful handwork fascinated me, she comments, and I thought I should try something similar. Mm. When I started working in 1975, I was the only person doing quilting in Munich. Wow. However, she was not a novice to patchwork, having learned hexagonal English piecing as a child mm. from a grand aunt who had mm. herself learned it from an English governess. Hey, mm. Get back <laughs> that's to right. your patchwork, yes, that's right. child. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful. I mean, look how it's constructed. There's, yeah. It's just block by block, right? It is kind and of peaky and spiky. A little bit. Not exactly. But, but, but it's, it's mm -hmm. randomized, and it's just these mm -hmm. little, I mean, it's uh, paper pieced, obviously, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. so good. Like, what is this? What is it even? It looks like a exploding pineapple. Yeah, it kind of does. In a wonderful mm -hmm. way. Um, it's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, just, oh, eight, I'm eight years younger than you, Kenny. Kenny, you're my brother friend mm -hmm. from another mother. Let's just be honest. Um, well, this so has been really fun. It has <laughs> been really fun. Um, so uh, Kenny says, makes me wonder if we seeded the Philippines with quilts during our occupation. That's so interesting, and that that's a good question, and that's why this book is really good. And there's a few others. I mean, I can show you, but but I mean, it's great. So please put it on your list. And I don't have it, and so well, it won't come with me. But uh, I really if you want it, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, interestingly, the American quilters, which we didn't talk about, true, that were included, true, were, uh, and this is a long time ago, but I mean, it's Nancy Halpern. Yeah. It's Monica Calvert. Yeah. And who was the other one? All 
Nancy Pearson. I oh, mean, wow. these, these are well. This is by Jean Ray Lori. Oh, yeah, so I mean, these were these were important quilt makers. Mm-hmm. I mean, they stayed important. What I'm trying to say is, oh, sh- Bonnie sorry, sorry. Lehman and Carrie Bresnahan, they knew who to ask me, from yeah. America because right, right. because these they knew everything. They were, look at the think of those three people. Yeah. So you don't have to read these, but look at this. This is the last quilt in the book. It's yeah. silk, hand dyed silk, yeah, piece wow. by piece, hand dyed silk. Yeah. By it's called Herbst, uh, uh, which is, means autumn from Heidelberg, West Germany. She's from West Germany. Doris, Doris Winter. Winter. Yeah. I mean, look at this thing. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. It's insane. It's, it is amazing. Really, really cray cray. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, and this one. So, so this one. I'll just you know we, we can just you know gloss over these. But this one I, I put in. You just passed it because this to me. I mean, it's like we could see it at Coolcon yeah, next yeah, week. Yeah, definitely. You know. It's just yeah. very, I don't know. Yeah, it's, that's, that's pretty cool. It's got that, All that, that They look like shot cottons. Yeah, they do. I wonder if they are. Alice I mean, they and could Goss, be. Alice and Goss. These were, these were big deals. Nancy Hopper. Yeah, wow. these were the American cultures. Mm-hmm. These were noteworthy Crystal Fedmans. Mm-hmm. Judy, Con- Judy Conjure. I knew her. You know all yeah. these people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. We and were, that's we why, making waves. I swear, Bonnie mm-hmm. Lehman, she put that together because yeah. she, well, she just probably knew. tells she knew. Just who did what. She knows. Oh, look at this one. This is insane. Yeah. God. I mean, do they... I, I don't know. Uh, quilts are so amazing. They're so amazing. They're so amazing. They look so... They're so different. And then the, eight, the styles change and the fashions change. And quilts stay the same, but they change so much. I mean, look, look at this. My, the first block, quilt block I ever made was this quilt block. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, just that, like, eight-point star... Sawtooth Star or whatever. I mean, it's just, it's just so ba- it's so basic. I'm so basic. Um, you know, Carrie Bresenhan wrote the introduction. Mm. Uh, and she, you know, Carrie Bresenhan owns a quilt market, uh, yeah. quilt, uh, quilt festival. And look you know, this, she- Look at this block. It's the she, same. Look at this brown yeah, block. She's it's a just Estonian a... that she started her shop, Great Expectations, after running for pol- public office. Yeah? Public office. She ran for- She's amazing. Uh, I'm not sure it was a state. Uh, she's a Southern Democrat, mm-hmm. and she uh, ran for. She major. I think she's journalism. Mm-hmm. She majored in journalism, mm-hmm. I think, and then uh, ran for public office. Did not make it, and so she started a quilt shop. And then one thing led to another, and um, you know, I I was I read you that email today. Someone's asking me to record something about mentors for uh, International Women's Day, mm. which is coming up, and like you know, I would say, Carrie Bresenhan, Marty Michelle, Bonnie Lehman. Those are the women that made it possible for me to, you know, make a living in the quilt world. Marty yeah. Michelle, Kelly, Carrie Bresenhan. And Carrie Bonnie. Bresenhan made it a business. Bonnie Lima told us everything we needed to know. Wow. And Marty Michelle started a publishing company and published her first book. So, you know. Mm-hmm. You meet people in your life that, you know, show you, show you the way. But you got to take it. You got to take it. And I'm going to show myself out. Yeah. It's okay. Thank Mom, you. you did a great job. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, anytime. And um, people really like it when and you're on the show. I'll see like it. some of you at QuiltCon. Yes. If, as yes. long as, you know. One of my best friends has got a positive COVID my, test here. My, my second mom. My second mom. Yeah. She's got she's got COVID. Well, well, I mean, she tested positive, but she feels fine, you know. So I'm going to go. I turned my phone off. Maybe I got a message from her. But yeah, I took go. her some carbonara. She, oh, well, yeah. she's going to be yeah. fine. Okay. <laughs> bye. Uh, bye, mom. Bye. Uh, you stuck with me. I hope it's So you got the tote. I got the tote. Does this go back in the gift shop? Yes. Okay. See Everybody's it. saying goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> um, that was fun, right? That was really fun. It was really fun. Um, I, you know, she gets tired. I mean, well, we all do. We all do. I mean, I'm a little tired too. So, uh, so I didn't want to keep push her. I didn't want to push her. But it's really nice to have to have, you know, to have the moms on the mother unit because we we do have a, a good time together. Uh, and so it was. It was nice to be able to do this with her. And just in case you came in late, I'm broadcasting from the Iowa Quilt Museum. And, you know, the special effects on this show pretty much limited to the soundboard. Except tonight, there's a little something else. We're at the Iowa Quilt Museum. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all, you know, it's all smoke and mirrors. So, you know, I'm at the, I'm at the Iowa Quilt Museum. And, it's great, and uh, the, the exhibit that's on right now, 
um, is is just really is really beautiful and and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come here on Friday morning at 9 a.m. Friday morning 9 a.m. Central and I'm gonna live stream and show you around the exhibit because it's a way for me to um, oh you can raise the green screen mom on your way out yeah yeah you can just raise it up it's really easy um, What's that? Stuff home. The car's out front. Well, I get, oh, we'll Please. figure that out later. Yeah. I won't be on too much longer. I mean, because I got to do work still tonight. So, isn't oh, that so great? Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, so so I want to be able to live stream from QuiltCon at least some stuff. I mean, we we got to share with everybody who's not going to be at the show uh, at QuiltCon <clears throat> this year. So, uh, Friday at 9 a.m., I'll take you through the exhibit, and it'll give me a chance to practice with you all using Twitch on my phone and like doing this. And, uh, oh good, and I know it's kind of a weird time. You know, 9 a.m. Friday, it's a work time, but the, the Iowa Quilt Museum isn't open at that time. You know, we're gonna do it. If you can hop on, great. If you're a subscriber, you can watch it any old time. And, uh, and Molly has, doesn't have a meeting, so you'll be there. At least one person has to be there to tell me if it's working, but, um, but that's great. Okay, good. You're, re you're researching quilt history. It's work, it is work. It's work. <sighs> I have another book that I can talk about, but I'm not gonna, I'm, no, no, okay. So I'm gonna do the, this, so we're gonna talk about Gita another time. It was so exciting to see an early quilt by Gita. Um, so that's for another day. Oh good, Mother Nature's loading Twitch on, on her new phone now. Yeah, I mean, I gotta make sure I'm updated and all that stuff. Um, but so, so for, for the second part of the show tonight, it's, it's shorter, but I, I got excited because as I was looking at mom's bookshelf, I found another book that I don't have, and I have so many, but like, who am I kidding? I have very few. There's so many books about quilts and quilt history, quilt culture in America and beyond. Um, there's so many books I don't have, and that's exciting because it means that I can find them. Um, oh, nice, Fraz Noel, you're gonna be there. I'm just up the road from your hometown. I think we've talked about that, right? You're, I mean, yeah, you're not far, you're not far. Crafts for Others work, works nights. If you wake up in time, we'll be here, you know? About an hour, probably. Uh, and we'll see how, how it works. I mean, how does the microphone work? Like, I don't know, guys. I don't know. So here's another book that mom has that I don't have. Stitching Memories, African-American Story Quilts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody gives so, It's Okay the, dis, the Discord link. If you have to whisper her. Go ahead and do it. A careless whisper. That's what DMs are called on Twitch. Um, whispers. So, okay, if you, yeah, make sure you get that link. And if you don't, just make a lot of noise so I see it and I'll, we'll find a way to get it to you. Anyway, Stitching Memories, African American Story Quilts. And, and I got excited because, so this was published by the Williams College Museum of Art. Um, and, uh, and so as I was looking at it, I found a lot of things that I don't, that I didn't know about. But I found a lot of things that I did know about because we talked about them on this show. And I thought it, I thought it was really exciting. And so I'm gonna show you a couple, just a few pictures from this. Um, so just a little bit about what this is. Um, this is a foreword by Rod Fowles, the Associate Director of William College Museum of Art, okay? Oh yeah, let me get, let me get, let me get another thing. Um, huh, remember this? Do you remember this? Remember this quilt? And, 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 and it was so cool. I think, oh my God, okay. I think that this was the first quilt that I ever had on my green screen. I really do. I think this was it. I think it was the first one. And this is also the first night that I've ever used a green screen on location or ever, the first time I've ever done a, a, a show on location because in case you didn't see it two minutes ago, we're at the Iowa Quilt Museum. Oh my God, okay. So so this this quilt was, I'm pretty sure it was the first one. And I was wearing that bright orange sweatshirt. And, and, and this quilt is in this book. It was in the exhibit and it was so exciting to see it. So, so anyway, so I'll just give a, just a little bit um, about this. In its premiere at the WCMA, oh, did I say when it was? This was made in 1990, it was published, okay? 
You remember this one, right? And it's just like this wonderful sort of strange, like evocative, I don't know. I just, I saw it and I loved it and I didn't know too much about the maker. And I think I read to you everything I could find about it, right? Well, just wait. So, um, it, uh, rah, 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 hold on. So in its premiere, Stitching Memories became the centerpiece of art, African American, a series of exhibitions and related programs organized to celebrate the centennial of Williams College. Uh, William, Williams College's first black graduate, Gaius Char Charles Bolin, class of 1889. Not only is Stitching Memories the first exhibition of African American story quilts, it's the first to focus on narrative quilts. And so, yeah, oh, this is great. One of the most, ex uh, so um, critics like uh, Lee Hollingsby have found the exhibition unique in its questioning of the definition of African-American quilts and quilts in general. Quote, one of the most exciting things about the show is that it expands the viewer's consciousness about what a quilt is, what ingredients go into it, and how it is shaped and stitched, unquote. So anyways, it's imperfectly perfect, agreed. So I'm looking through this book and excited to look at it more deeply. And I forgot to scan this one for you all, but I was just so excited because the thing is, you know, this show, like I, I love to read about this stuff and, but sharing it with you is so exciting, but like, it really is research. I mean, it really is learning. It really is like, it, it really is that. And so when I look at a book like this about a really powerful exhibit and I'm like, oh yeah, that quilt is so amazing. You know, being familiar with it, it, it feels good because it's like progress or something. Like, you know, there's, a, there's quilts in this, in this book that I don't know and that you don't know, but check this out. First of all, we, oh yeah, okay, look, that's Romar Bearden. And we talked about Romar Bearden on the show. You know, we talked about Romar Bearden on the show. Uh, and his, this is a, a, a picture, a uh, painting called Quilting Time. And we talked about his, his wonderful uh, collage and painting, I mean, a while ago, but I, I love Romar Bearden. And, and, and he made an appearance, you know, on Quilt Nerd. And it's exciting. See you, Sibby Mac, thanks for coming. What a crack up. So, so that, you know, I was like, oh, that's great, Romar Bearden. And then that's when I saw the, the quilt that we just looked at, which was by, sorry, Elizabeth Scott. And, and we knew that when we talked about the quilt before, but, here, but th there's so much more, you know, about it. And there's another quilt by her, maybe a couple. I think there's a couple. So that was exciting too. I mean, believe me, this quilt will make an appearance at Quilt Nerd at some point. This quilt is by Elizabeth Scott as well, the woman who made this. And this other quilt that I have in pocket now is, it's the first quilt Elizabeth Scott ever made. It was begun when she was a young girl. She, she worked on it for 50 years. She started it when she was nine. Qu quote, I started this quilt when I was nine years old, finished it 50 years later. I mean, so that's really cool, but that's the, the woman who made the quilt I'm talking about is this woman. So, and we talked about that quilt on the show. We talked about Romar Bearden. This is Yvonne Wells, you know? One of my favorite shows ever is when we talked about Yvonne Wells because Yvonne Wells is, I don't know, she's one of the best quilt makers I think that's ever lived in the United States and she's still alive, but her quilts are, I don't know. I don't know. There's some of, it's some of my favorite art that's ever been made ever. And I like art, but Yvonne Wells. And so, you know, we talked about Yvonne Wells. So, so it's just, it's encouraging to see like, yeah, you know, I have a lot of holes in my knowledge, but being able to do this show with you all is exciting because I'm like, okay, you know, where are the holes? When you look at a, and there's, like I said, there's a lot of uh, stuff in here I don't know about, cultures I need to learn about. But Nora Azell is in here. And we talked about, Nor Nora Azell keeps coming up. I mean, she is a major name, you know? 
Myra, yes, research. It's why I love the show so much. I'm learning to quilt at home by doing while learning about quilts here. Totally. A rounded education. Thanks, Mary. It's my pleasure. No craft program near me offers what you do here on Quilt Nerd. It's truly special, the show of yours. Absolutely. Not just saying it. You know, it's our show. Like, without it... I mean, it's interesting because, like, hmm. <laughs> you know, if you, if you teach, you know, you learn, you learn more. There's some saying about, you know, if you teach what you know, oh well, yeah, if you teach what you know, you kind of internalize something more. You know, I'm not teaching on the show, but there's something about learning in public, you know, it is kind of like a class, but because I'm not prepping a lesson, you know, I'm just prepping material. I think it sticks more because I could read this book and look at this stuff, but would I remember this as well on my own. You know what I'm saying? So it's exciting. It's really exciting. So yeah, so Nora Azell made this quilt, which I've never seen, you know, but there she is. So that's totally cool. And then, oh yeah, and I forgot to do this one. I forgot to scan this one because I thought I could have just the image on, I could find it on my computer. You know we're on location because the phone's ringing. Look at this one. We just looked at this the other day. Sorry. You know, the, the, the masterpiece folk art quilt. You know, you remember this one. <laughs> the quilt that we were like, sort of like that about. <laughs> you can drink in the back row. Uh, totally, yes. You, it's a, Molly says it's a class where we can make wisecracks and ooh and ah, it's perfect. Agreed. Like, I'm telling you, it's just, having my mom on is really fun. I mean, it's really fun. It's super fun. I wish she could do it like, you know, more than she, because having her here is great. We'll figure out the whole piping her into the show at some point. Um, but yeah, it's super fun. But it's also just fun to, I don't know, just be here. But anyway, yeah, yeah, I, lo I love it. And so look at this. So this is the Afro-American Bicentennial quilt, the heritage quilt. We just looked at it. It's got, it's, its title is so long. I, I, I didn't get it right. Afro, the Afro-American Heritage Bicentennial Quilt Commemorative Commemorative Quilt. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long title, but it, I mean, it's so great. And we just looked at it. And this is probably a better image of it than I had even before. I don't know, it's just great. It's great, it's a really significant quilt. And so, you know, there's quilts that, by people that we look at and we, we don't know their names and we'll never know their names, but there are these quilts like in the American quilt canon they must be it's not that somebody says this is in the american quilt canon but it has to be because we keep seeing it <laughs> exactly um you know it's just pedophores pedophores i thought pedophores were little cakes hey raffle waffle i'm so glad you're here you missed the crack up with my mom you should watch it on the replay it was ridiculous um okay and then just a couple more oh yeah a couple more that we haven't seen together. This quilt is famous too. And I know about this quilt. It's the Todd family quilt. Um, and I have color picture, I have a couple color pictures of this because this quilt we included in the family issue of Quilt Folk magazine, issue 16. Uh, this is amazing. I mean, I mean, I can tell you a little bit about it, but I wanna, you know, I kinda wanna save it because it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I will save it. It's, it's amazing, but it's in this really significant exhibit of African-American story quilts. And it's encouraging to see this because it's like, okay, cool. I'm getting, you know, an understanding of what, of what, of what this looks like. What, what does it look like? What, you know, I care so much about quilts in America. I'm willing to like, you know, take a, a lot of hatred, <laughs> you know, people who don't know me and they see me for 22 minutes doing like a, you know, provocative thing. And they're like, well, she's the worst thing ever. And it's like, well, I'm willing to deal with it because I have something I want to say about this. I think it's really important. And so, um, so if I think it's so important, like why, why do I think that? And show us some proof, you know? And it's like the more, the more we hang out and like look at these books together and talk about this stuff and sort of learn in public I mean I think the more the more it it makes sense yeah quilts aren't just pretty blankets they're really important and some of them look like this and they're like okay you know this is something to save you know obviously but some of them don't look like much 
they're really important and there's something to save and I don't know. I just think it's pretty cool. And so this quote I've never seen before. It's amazing. It's by Alice Neal. And I'll read, I'll read about it uh, for you. Yeah, it looks like a mother-in-law. So in the words of independent scholar Eli Leon, who we've heard before, because Eli Leon was that dude who collected all of those quilts of Rosie Lee Tompkins, many others from, I think, I mean, from what I know, I've got a whole book about them, we can talk about it. Black quilt makers in the South, I'm not sure that was it, but I mean, most of, it seems, his collection was uh, quilts made by black women in the American South. But his main claim to fame was that he was the dude who was working with Rosie Lee Tompkins and saved like what, like 600 of her quilts or something like that. So you know that name, see? I mean, like how nerdy. It's like the nerd bell is going off. Maybe we need a nerd bell. By the way, this soundboard, I mean, this, <laughs> this thing, this thing is, can do many things. It can do amazing things. It can do like, it can like, you know, I don't know, make the screen bigger and, you know, make clips of the show that I can post to social media or whatever. But it's just a soundboard right now. I just want to let you know, like, that's all it does, and I'm fine with it. But I think it's supposed to do more than that. I think you're supposed to program it to do more than that, and I'm like, no, we need more sound cues. Okay, so this is, this is uh, Alice Neal made this, and this is Eli Leon speaking about this quilt. Quote, Alice Neal learned to quilt from her mother, Mary Bright, and just kind of come on up making quilts, quote, unquote. Bright's own mother had started her out real early quilting. In turn, Bright's daughters were taught to quilt. Uh, so, so, so sorry. So this is Eli Leon quoting Alice Neal. So it's a little weird. In turn, Bright's daughters were taught to quilt. Quote: As soon as we know, as soon as we got where we knew how to hold a needle, because it was no such thing as going to the store buying a blanket. Unquote. In the quote, Neil began to work on the Mary Bright commemorative quilt in 1955. So this is her mom. I mean, that's her mom. Mm -hmm. And we did open the show with mother-in-law. That's so crazy. Oh yeah, pinafores. I know what you mean. Yeah, those little smocky kind of thing. Pinafores, yeah. Um, it's, it's, look at this face, another face. Oh my God, it's so good. Um, so she began to work on the Mary Bright commemorative quilt in 1955, the year after her mother's death. It was intended to be used on a bed in a museum the Brights wanted to establish on their land in Louisiana to document the life and times of the family and region. Whoa! The larger plans did not materialize, but the quilt tells Mary Bright's part of the story. Oh my God. It's so great. It's so great. Mary Bright, March 22, 1874. Started, oh wow, that started September 5, 1955. Dean, Louisiana. Oakland, California. Finished, oh my God, January 25th, 1956. She put the start and end date on it. It's so good. Y'all are talking about petty whores, embarrassing your children. If SJ, if you're here, clean it up. Just kidding. All right. So that, yeah, there's wonderful quilts in here. You'll, you'll see the other quilts in this book for sure. I've got some scanning to do this week. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so awesome. Wow. Oh, really good. Really good. Okay. So that is the show tonight. It's about a quarter till. Usually we go about two hours, but it's a quarter till, and I think it's, it's a good thing. It's a good moment, you know, to, to cool, cool it off. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to share. You know, QuiltCon is, is often, the, the, the week before QuiltCon is like the busiest week for me. The busiest in terms, no, it's the most intense, because these slideshows that I make, I mean, I usually have like 170 slides per thing. And yeah, there's just like, I don't know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I got to work on it. And, and as I said at the top of the show, too, you know, all these little things are so, so important about subs and the affiliate link and all this stuff. It's like, 
I start to do something and I'm like, what am I doing? Oh my God. And I have to like go and, and work on my slides and, and yeah, the quilts and fine art lecture, I'm getting really excited about that one. All the focus is kind of in my, in my mind, you know, has been on this quilts and fashion thing, but, uh, but the, 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 the quilts and fine art, if, I mean, if you're at QuiltCon, I think it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I, 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 it's so interesting. I love doing these lectures because I really learn, I really learn things and I, it ends up being something different than I thought it was going to be. Um, a, a sneak peek, just a real quick, quick one. Maybe I, okay. Yeah, real quick. No, 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 I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to, I'm going to work it and I'm going to, go have some car plastic carbonara and either fall asleep right away and get up very early in the morning or have a little bit and maybe even work a little more tonight. So thank you all for coming. So cool to have my mom here and so fun to be. At the Quilt Museum. So I'll see you soon. Uh, I'll see you Thursday at 11 a.m. And who knows where I'll be. And then Friday 9 a.m. I'll take you on a tour of the Quilt Museum uh, live. I don't know how it's going to go, but it'll, it'll happen. So you guys are awesome. Hey, oh, it's, it's M, uh, M, M, E, Larry's first live show. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. We got to get, before we leave, some welcome baskets in the chat. So glad you're here. That's fantastic. Uh, we have a good time here, you know? Uh, okay. Okay. We'll see you soon and uh, see you on Thursday. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>